Welcome to online worship at Our Savior's Lutheran Church. I'm Deacon Tracy Katchke, and I'm delighted that you are joining us today. This week, we will take a moment to reflect on our role as faithful disciples, branches growing from the vine of Jesus' love. Please join me and Pastor Dale Zemer now as we prepare our hearts and minds for worship. We are the branches rooted in the vine of Christ. We come because we seek to abide in Christ. And the branches that remain in the vine bear much fruit. We come because we long to be spiritually vibrant, alive, productive. And if we abide in Christ, then Christ's words will abide in us. We come because we strive to be faithful disciples. We gather for worship now to the glory of the one God, creator, redeemer, and sustainer. May, May we, we grow, grow wildly as God, God tends us, us lovingly. lovingly. is risen, trumpets resounding in glorious light, splendor the Lamb, heaven forever, oh what a miracle God has in sight, Jesus is risen and we shall arise, give God the glory. Welcome again to online worship at Our Savior's Lutheran Church. This week, we do ask that you continue to keep Pastor Pete and the entire Warman and family in your thoughts and prayers as they recover from the COVID-19 virus. We also want to remind you to you know, keep safe, keep healthy, and always remember to mask up. If you could please save the date for Sunday, May 23rd, that is Pentecost Sunday, and at 10 a.m., we will be having an outdoor parking lot worship to celebrate that special day. All are welcome to join us once again at 10 a.m. on Sunday, May 23rd. And for other announcements and happenings, please feel free to visit our website, oursaviors.org. The scripture for today, the fifth Sunday of Easter, is from the Gospel according to John in the 15th chapter, beginning with verse 1. Jesus said, I am the vine, 
and my Father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Grace and peace to you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The friend request was a complete blast from the past. I hadn't spoken to Jenny in years, and now, on a sunny Tuesday morning, here she was wanting to connect on Facebook. Shortly after accepting her request, a message from Jenny popped up on my screen that simply read, hey, how have you been? As I sipped my coffee, I pondered where to begin and how to respond. I could vividly remember my last conversation with her at our high school graduation, 21 years ago. Jenny and I had been friends throughout high school, not best friends by any means, but friends who talked and hung around on occasion. We were in a few classes together, had been in the same friend groups for homecoming and prom, and had even sat next to each other on the same flight to San Diego for our senior year choir trip. And yet, our last conversation had gone something like this. We were standing in our cap and gown in the high school field house right after our graduation ceremony had ended. Jenny and I had hugged, said, congratulations, we did it! And before meeting up with our families, mentioned getting together over the summer. Jenny would be going to Elmhurst College, and I would be headed to Western Illinois in the fall. So we both agreed that hanging out before leaving would be a lot of fun. And that was it. I could vividly recall our last conversation but could not remember why we never hung out, never called. Now, 21 years later, here Jenny was, and I was sitting befuddled with my coffee, wondering why we hadn't stayed connected in the first place. Staying connected has changed dramatically over the years. During World War II, my grandpa would write letters home to my grandma from the European theater, the letters sometimes taking weeks to arrive in Chicago. When I was little, my parents talked on the phone every single day, especially when my dad was traveling around the country for work. And now I can connect via FaceTime with my nieces and nephews in Indiana, Wisconsin, and Lombard within a matter of seconds. We can be connected to our family and friends within mere moments via rapid fire text, Zoom, social media. And while the methods in which we use to unite have sped up, bonds still find a way to be lost. It has happened to all of us at one time or another. We change jobs move to a different location, retire, get married, experience the loss of a loved one, or decide to start a new chapter. In those transitions, 
lifestyles, associations, and things in common change. So much so that no matter how hard we try, some bonds are lost within the changes. Sometimes the bond that we lose is not a friendship or a colleague. It's a connection to our faith. We move away from the faith community of our youth, struggle to find a church home, or simply drift away from our connection with Christ. Life gets in the way, and nurturing that bond becomes less and less of a priority. Shortly before his death, Jesus addressed this exact same concern with his disciples. It was the night of the arrest, and even though Jesus was among friends, he knew that he was going to die. Remarkably, Jesus was not concerned about what lie ahead. Instead, his thoughts were focused on the disciples and their faith life after his passing. Literally and figuratively, the disciples would be struggling once Jesus was gone. Those that persecuted Jesus would undoubtedly turn their attention to the disciples. For these men had followed Jesus, believed Jesus, and spread Jesus' message. Now they would be the enemy, just as Jesus was. The disciples would be angry at this turn of events, sad and scared. The situation that was to come would definitely be a struggle for the disciples. And how easy it would be to simply walk away from one's faith, to disconnect and pretend that the last three years never happened. It is on this night of unimaginable tension that Jesus decides to provide the disciples and all of us of a lasting reminder of one's faith. John chapter 15 verses 1 through 2 states, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit he prunes to make it bear more fruit. Jesus' first two words in chapter 15, I am am, are powerful in and of themselves. Throughout the Gospel of John, Jesus reiterates who he is through several I am statements. I am the bread of life. I am the light of the world. I am the way and the truth and the life. Each statement points us to the truth of Jesus's identity that Jesus is God, as well as provides a source of comfort. This last I am statement, I am the true vine, connects with the disciples a little bit more. The image of vines and vineyards remind them of the safety of home. The disciples would also know well what is needed to tend to a vineyard. One prunes and nurtures the branches that provide fruit so they will bear more, and one cuts away the branches that are dying so the vine can live. Knowing the disciples' familiarity with vineyards, Jesus continues to use this metaphor to discuss their faith. John chapter 15, verses 5 through 6 states, I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. Jesus' message to his disciples and us is simple. Stay connected. Just as the vine is the life source for the branches, Jesus is life for us. This message is particularly poignant for the disciples. Although they do not know at that moment 
that Jesus is about to be arrested and die, the events to come will shake them to their core. Jesus is telling them, and ultimately us, to stay connected and keep the faith. When we are joined to the vine, to Jesus, anything is possible. We will flourish during life's good times and bad. However, without that connection, we are powerless. Similar to not being able to breathe without air, we cannot function spiritually without Jesus. In John 15, verses 7 through 8, Jesus empowers us further. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. Become my disciples. Spread the messages. Live in love and kindness. Help those in need. Stay connected. What Jesus did not mention to his disciples is that following these words are easier said than done. And we know that now, 2,000 years later. Life gets busy or simply gets in the way. Priorities shift and change, and the thought of, maybe I'll check into church next weekend, becomes eh, one of those days. Here's the cool part, though. Staying connected to Jesus doesn't just mean going to church. It means being fed by the Holy Spirit in a multitude of ways. And yes, worship is one of those ways. One can also stay connected to Jesus through prayer. And let's be honest, sometimes prayer in the car, in the shower, around the dinner table is a powerful source of comfort. Stay connected to the friendships that you have made within your community of faith. Enjoy the laughter. Relish the conversation. Draw from the strength of others. Jesus' bottom line for all of us is this. Don't go at life alone. Feel the stability of a deeply rooted community of faith. Let the Holy Spirit strengthen you, flow through your veins, and guide you through all of the transitions that life has to offer. Plug back in and stay connected to the vine, to Jesus, and let his love nurture you. As I sipped my coffee and looked at Jenny's message, I realized that the burning question of why didn't we stay connected in the first place didn't matter. So what if it had been 21 years since our last conversation? The fact of the matter was that Jenny had reached out and was wondering how I am doing now. We were reestablishing that connection. I responded, hey, I am doing well. How are you? And thus, the conversation began. I am sure that at some point, we will meet up over a cup of coffee or a glass of wine and talk about what we've been up to in the past 21 years. I'm also sure that part of that conversation will contain the question, why did it take so long to reconnect? And the answer will undoubtedly go something like this. I don't know. Life happened. Truthfully, the reason for the lost connection doesn't matter. What does matter in friendships and in faith is that the bond is happening and being reestablished now. Sometimes all it takes is to answer a friend request. Amen. I'm here 
separated Apart and torn away Broken branches Need of your grace There is no life apart from you You're here in my failing Your word makes me pure in my weakness Your strength is secure All of my life is found in you You are the vine we are the branches I am nothing without you It's all for your glory All for your purpose Bless me and more of you Side of your love in every season, your grace is enough. You are in me as I believe. I'm called and appointed, showing your life. I'm chosen, a co heir with Christ. Word inside me now bearing your fruit. You are the vine, we are the branches. I am nothing without you. It's all for your glory, all for your purpose. Bless me. Alive and by the power of the Holy Spirit in Christ, we bring our prayers before God who promises to hear us and to answer in steadfast love. God, like a gardener, you care for all that you have planted. You nurture, tend, feed all to whom you have given life. As your church and as branches connected to the vine, you have called us to bear fruit and extend your life and your love into the world. You care for us, you cultivate us, and you even prune us that we might bear fruit. You have given us life that we might share life. May we ever abide in you and you in us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, you have created the heavens and the earth. Among the cosmos, the stars, galaxies, and planets, 
you have given life to this globe, and we see it come alive now in these springtime days. In wonder and awe, we behold the beauty of creation in all its magnificent color. So instill in us the will and the way to be faithful stewards in each corner of the vineyard where you have planted us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, in faith we trust that you rule the nations. In faith we declare that your vision is a vision for the world, a vision of harmony and peace, ruled with justice and love. In faith, we seek to follow your will and your way. We pray for the leaders of all nations, those who honor you along with those who don't. May all be guided by your vision, so no one is left out, that all may flourish and the common good is served. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, you have loved us so that we can love others. We pray for all in need of your love, those who are poor, lowly, outcast, weak, or fearful. Provide for the needs of the sick and those who are hurting. We pray for these and all whom we name before you now, either silently or aloud. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. We take a moment now to offer aloud or silently each our own prayer or thanksgiving. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the hope of new life in Christ and the promise of Easter, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. We join now in the Lord's Prayer as we sing. one another, because love is from God. Proclaim God's salvation to every generation. Remain in Jesus Christ, and like branches of a vine, draw your life from him. And may God the vine grower tend you and make you fruitful. May Jesus Christ abide in you and give you life. And may the Holy Spirit cast out all fear, and fill you with God's love. Amen.